Hi, I'm Femi OK. Today, why are looted Ethiopian treasures from the 19th century still in the UK? I'm Malika Bilal. A new exhibition in London showcases plundered artifacts from the Abyssinian Empire, casting a spotlight once again on the debate over whether the spoils of war should be returned to their home countries. So right now, you are in the stream. We are live on Al Jazeera and YouTube. So leave your comments in the chat box and Malika and I will do our best to get them into the show. My name is Popkin, I'm an activist and an economist, and you are in the stream. Ethiopia's government is calling for the return of cultural artifacts plundered 150 years ago by the British Army. The relics, some of which are currently on display at London's Victoria and Albert Museum, were stolen in 1868 after the Battle of Magdala. That's when British troops raided the fortress of Abyssinian Emperor Theodoros II to release a group of imprisoned missionaries. Ethiopia has previously requested that several British institutions give back hundreds of manuscripts and artifacts and that the remains of the emperor's young son, Prince Ale Mayu, who was kidnapped during the same raid and taken to Britain, be returned. VNA Museum Director Tristram Hunt has proposed lending items in the museum's collection to Ethiopian institutions as part of a long-term loan partnership. But Iman Mohammed, who pitched today's show, suggested this idea instead. Take a look. This is centrally a sovereignty issue. Looted treasures must be returned to Ethiopia. But beyond sentimentality, we need to make this arrangement more practical and sustainable. So why not support Ethiopia in the design and management of museums and tourist attractions? Why not extend technical support and uh, research collaborations? And why not share in the profits of such ventures and for once tell balanced stories in the places where battles were actually fought? Why not bring Queen Victoria's uh, crown to Ethiopia for display, as not all Ethiopians can afford to travel to the UK? So, should looted historical artifacts remain in Britain's museums or should they be repatriated to Ethiopia? Joining us now to discuss this, we have Maza Mingiste. She is a Fulbright scholar and the author of the novel Beneath the Lion's Gaze. She joins us from New York. Also in New York, Maxwell Anderson, an author and the former director of the Dallas Museum of Art. And in Newcastle under Lyme in the United Kingdom, we have Awo Alo, and he is an associate professor of law at Keele University. Hello, everybody. It's great to have you here in the stream. So I want to start with our community because we put this question to them and this is what we asked. Do you think artifacts plundered from Ethiopia by the British Army 150 years ago should be returned? And this is pretty reminiscent of a lot of the comments we got. Stanley here says this isn't a question to debate. I mean, the answer is obvious. However, it may not be as obvious to this person who also tweeted in. Paul said it should only be returned to Ethiopia once they can guarantee that the artifacts won't be sold to art lovers around the world. And currently, I think they're safer in British hands. Oh, well, you can see the debate has started online right there. Which side of it do you fall on? Mm. Um. I think the the ethical responsibility, the moral responsibility to safeguard uh, these treasures and cultural artifacts uh, that belong to particular countries, but as treasures, they are also universal in terms of their values and valued by peoples and societies around the world. So the responsibility to safeguard them is collective. And in some cases, if the rightful owners of these cultural properties uh, for several reasons are incapable of providing the kind of security and, and, and preservation that these items require, then those who have the resources and technical know-how can always support them. So this is really not, as you know, the first um, tweet uh, noted, this is not an issue for, for debate. And of course, these properties has to be sent back to their rightful owners, to their moral owners. But in terms of debates around preservation and their, their integrity, other nations, other people around the world can actually support them. And a lot of the Geneva, a lot of the uh, UNESCO conventions that regulate issues around how these artifacts, properties should be protected, provide specifically for international cooperation and assistance, both technical and financial. Mm. So, Max, the reason this story blew up was because these various British museums said, uh, we are going to loan your artifacts back to you as a long-term loan. That caused the furore. 
What do you make of that? Right. <laughs> well, I think the fact with British museums is that it would require an act of parliament to allow them to deaccession, so-called, or to turn these works back to Ethiopia, which is not an impossibility, but it requires a public sort of maelstrom of interest within Britain to get members of parliament to say, it's time. It's time to take this wrong from 1868 and right it. Mm. And I don't know how that would play out within Britain, but that's just a legal construct. It's not, no one would debate from my point of view, the moral argument that these works were wrested illegally from Abyssinia at the time, today, modern Ethiopia. Does this look like a moral argument, though, to you, uh, Max? We talked to the British Museum and they sent us a statement. It was a long statement. Two bits stood out for us. Here's the first part. In terms of loans, the trustees of the British Museum have always been clear that they will consider, subject to the usual considerations of condition and fitness to travel, any loan requests for any part of the collection. The museum lends many thousands of objects all over the world each year. So, of course, please ask. We'll think about it. We may well send it to you if you've got the right conditions. That's not going into the nitty-gritty of the law. That's just them saying this stuff is our stuff and we'll loan it to you after we've had a think about it. Yes, and to, to be fair to the British Museum, they've been extremely generous in making loans around the world to institutions of various sizes in various places. But the issue at hand here is not a loan. Hmm. It is a, a claim. It is an absolute claim by the government of Ethiopia, which is saying a loan is not sufficient. That doesn't recognize our title. Mm. Maza. Yes. Um, well, I think the the idea that the VNA Museum will loan Ethiopia back the items that were stolen from Ethiopia, that Ethiopia can be a borrower of its own items. Uh, that were taken unlawfully is a slap in the face to Ethiopians and to the Ethiopian government. Um, I understand that there are difficulties and uh, Parliament may need to get involved. You know, there are all the legalities and the complications that surround this. Um, but the, I think the fact remains that this is, as, as Max said rightfully, that there's a moral obligation here. But I'd also like to point out that there were three instances where some of the looted items were returned to Ethiopia. And the first was to Emperor Johannes, who succeeded uh, Theodros after Theodros committed suicide. And then there were two other instances where I believe it was um, in 1924 and 1965 where items were returned to Emperor Haile Selassie. So this can happen. It has happened before. And I also think that if Italy, and this is something that Awal said on Twitter uh, today or yesterday, if, if Italy can return the obelisk that they stole out of Aksum in 1937, after 68 years, and if they can return it with all the logistical difficulties, um, a few items from the v and Museum, I mean, there are other things, but we're talking about this right now. I don't think it's an impossibility. It has happened before. So you mentioned this can happen, um, Maza, and I want to bring up two tweets from our community members who are talking about how it could happen. This is Rose Bell, who first uh, takes on the issue of the loan. She says, before they could get hands on those artifacts, lives were taken. They are a living memory that this violence and plunder happened to us. That they still ask for countries to take them back on loan is a reminder that they don't fully appreciate the terror of their forefathers and mothers. Another person weighs in, this is Samson, and he, he uh, does a little edit of headline. This image sums it up properly, he says. So he tweeted this to us. Looted Ethiopian treasures in the UK should be returned uh, on loan. He changes it to uh, uh, instead of could, should be, and they should be returned with interest. And while I, I want to bring this to you because several people have brought up money, compensation, that they should, should be given back along with some of the funds that these countries don't have that they could have had if they were in their country to begin with. Yeah, um, I think I, I, I want to go back to the point earlier raised in relation to, you know, major parliaments needs to take in order for these um, 
cultural property to be um, repatriated to Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia is a sovereign state. In terms of just dealing with the UK, it deals with it as a sovereign state. So what the UK government does in terms of changing its legislation has no bearing whatsoever on Ethiopia's claim. Right? So it, the relations between Ethiopia and, and the UK is governed according to international law. UK's own internal legislation has no bearing on that claim. But in international law as well, there is an obligation on the part of the UK to recognize the rights that the Ethiopian and the Ethiopian people have over this cultural property. There was a similar case in 1960s brought to the International Court of Justice, which is the principal uh, judicial organ of the United Nations. It was a case brought by Cambodia against Thailand. And, and, and the underlying principle in that case was really important for, for the case at hand here. And the court said that there is an obligation to restore removed cultural property to the state from whose territory mm. it originated. And the court said, this is a principle implicit in the sovereign power, in the sovereign authority of the state. So in terms of kind of legal difficulties, um, I don't think there is an insurmountable legal or right. moral uh, I, issue. I, here. I have, I have that another can, thought can that I, I actually want to pose to Matt. <clears throat> Matt, you have uh, been a director of a museum. I, I'm really curious, beyond this legal framework that may well be impacting, definitely is impacting, what British museums can do in terms of restitution, giving art back. Uh, what about the idea uh, of maybe just feeling embarrassed and awkward about the situation that you're, you're in charge of all of these stolen goods, basically? Uh, here's Tristan Hunt, and he is the uh, director of the Victorian Albert Museum. He wrote a blog. He wrote a blog about the Magdalen 1868 exhibition. I'm just going to scoot down here because he describes some of these objects. They are stunning pieces with a complex history. That phrase, a complex history, that feels like a euphemism right there, Max. The, the idea about, as a museum director, when you are being asked to give items back, what are you thinking? So before answering that, I would just second what I all said in respect to the government of Ethiopia and the government of the United Kingdom. I think the only point is that the Victorian Albert Museum by itself needs the government of UK to force its hand, as it were, if that's going to happen. I'm not suggesting that it's not utterly within the realm of likelihood that two nations should sort this out between themselves. I think that the question you ask about personal obligation is a critical one. When I was director of the Dallas Museum of Art, I restituted an antiquity to the Republic of Turkey when evidence was presented to me that it was looted, and looted in recent times, in the late 1990s. And the same with the Republic of Italy. I actually approached the Republic of Italy to confirm that these works were looted, and I did the same with the Turkish authorities. I didn't wait to be approached. Yeah. So I'm accustomed to understanding that the challenges that befall a director. And I think the, the challenge in this instance is that Great Britain has not been as let's say, forthcoming, as, as the, certainly the parties on this, in this conversation are, are, are advocating. Mm. But I, I would suspect that we're seeing a change in attitude, in popular attitude, which will inevitably have an effect on museum policy and on, on the opinion of the British people. Mm -hmm. Well, Maz, I want to bring up a, a, a concept that a few people in our community are raising. This is Mamo on Twitter who says, these things should stay in London. It's safer <laughs> in London than Addis or anywhere in Ethiopia. Now, we got a response, a, a bit of a formal response, uh, via a video comment uh, from the embassy, the Ethiopian embassy in the UK. And this is what the deputy head of mission told the stream. Uh, yes, I do believe that all these cultural artifacts should be returned back to Ethiopia because these are our identities and history of Ethiopia and also the symbol of civilization of Ethiopian uh, peoples. And also Ethiopians are able or capable of preserving and displaying their own heritage. That's why the government's policies policy is for eventual restitution. So, Maza, he says Ethiopia is capable of preserving and, 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 and displaying. Some people online say they're not so sure. 
Well, I think that the that the idea that Ethiopia or other nations that are maybe not from the West are not as capable of taking care of their own historical artifacts and treasures is really um, a condescending, patronizing, and, and racist form of thinking that should be, um, we should have moved further than this by now. But I would just like to point out that in Ethiopia, we have the bones of Lucy, which is one of the many, many, many treasures that are still in the country and still kept safely. Ethiopia is capable of this and can take care of these items. Um, and I do think that there is an opportunity for the V&A Museum to also work in collaboration with Ethiopia in making sure that um, Ethiopia has the most technologically advanced uh, uh, mechanisms for for safekeeping and and preserving some of some of these artifacts, but it's already happening there. Mm. Uh, it's not that Ethiopia mm. at all Can is I? failing, but I think that there's room for improvement. But it's not. Um, I completely disagree with can the I, comment just, that Ethiopia yeah. is incapable. Yeah. Go ahead, Awa. Can, can I just intervene here? Yeah, and I, I fully agree with, with Mother's point that this is extremely condescending. It simply reproduces the colonial narrative that, you know, societies in the global south are not capable of pre providing protection for these um, precious treasures that are so sacrosanct in their culture. And some of, some of these um, artifacts, by the way, have some very strong... Uh, religious significance and cultural significance mm -hmm. for the Ethiopian people. So mm -hmm. the idea that they cannot provide protection is just downright condescending. And I think the most important point here but, is uh, is the question of who actually owns these properties. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the, the argument about uh, providing protection is a very secondary question. It's an, mm -hmm. it's an auxiliary question. So instead of focusing on the secondary question of whether we'll be able to provide protection or not, yeah. the first question that we need to determine is who owns these properties. If we own them, if Ethiopia owns oh, them, well, I, it I, should be repatriated to Ethiopia. And then... Max, yes, go ahead. Yes, I, I agree with you. I was going, forgive me for interrupting. I was going to say it's, it's almost irrelevant because the fact of the matter is that the possessor and owner of something has the right to treat it as they choose to. We're all confident that the Ethiopian authorities would apply a great deal of effort to safeguarding, ensuring that these works were protected, that they were in a climate-controlled environment to the extent possible, and that they were made available for public viewing and appreciation and learning. There, there is an example that some would cite, which is that the Republic of Turkey had a successful lawsuit against the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They brought back over 160 treasures that had been looted from Turkey. They went to a museum, a regional museum in Turkey, and several of them were subsequently yeah. stolen from that museum. Now, this is an exception. It's like a red herring that's brought up. Mm -hmm. But I think that there will be voices that say mm -hmm. you can't always count on a source country to have the resources and, frankly, the ability to battle corruption that can make difficulties down the road. But it's irrelevant. The core, the core point that you make is the correct one. Who owns it is where you start. What happens to it downstream? I think it's a fantastic idea that the VNA could be helpful as a collegial institution to en enhancing the security and climate control and protection of the works if they were returned. Right. So, guess while you've been discussing uh, these artifacts, we've been looking at various videos of these artifacts uh, on show. Uh, Tristan Hunt again is the director of the Victoria and Albert Museum and he was thinking about how do I get out of this situation what is the way forward this is what he told us earlier this month have a look but as we look to the future I think what we're interested in are partnerships around conservation interpretation heritage management and these need to be supported by government assistance so that institutions like the vna can support sister institutions in ethiopia so you may remember that i showed you that blog post that tristram hunt wrote explaining about the magdala exhibit and underneath the blog post a lot of conversation going on here is ray and this, Ray is channeling what I'm thinking. I'm just a mere civilian, so I'm thinking what Ray's thinking. I think the Ethiopians should accept the offer of a long-term loan, then forget to give them back. 
Possession is nine tenths of the law. It doesn't matter how you get them back. It just matters that you do. Would the VNA really go to court to try and get them back once they were in Ethiopia, with all the negative publicity that that would ensure? I doubt it. Max, I am thinking this. I am thinking this every time there is a debate about we're going to give you this exhibition. Uh, you can have it on loan. It belongs to that country. Why wouldn't they just steal back their own stuff? Tell us why that is problematic. So I would hope that most of your viewers are concerned about the rule of law. <laughs> and that, so you know, we're stealing back our own stolen goods, is, so isn't that the rule of law? Well, I think the sovereign nations is the point. We're talking about two sovereign nations that should, through a mutual understanding, come to a result that everyone supports rather than mm. having a, an effort which would be seen as an end run. After all, the last thing we'd want to see is that works of art are no longer in circulation because yeah. no one trusts anyone. Yeah, I think that, that was you don't the downside want to start seeing... when I was thinking about this plan about yeah. stealing back our art or art that belongs right, to you right. from I the think, teams that I think, looking after it. I mean, looking after it. You know, honest, and honestly, I think if the Ethiopian authorities were willing to accede in the short term mm. to a loan that could go to Addis Ababa, mm -hmm. that could be shown okay. there, yeah. that could be part of what changes attitudinally the British people's understanding about the preparedness of the yeah. Ethiopian Can people I, and then motivate I, the act of parliament. But whether or not that will actually yeah. happen, just, whether or not that will actually happen is debatable. I want to read this comment we got on YouTube live. Keisha says, if Britain begins to return Ethiopian treasures, then people would start going through the whole stash of the British Empire's treasures and jewels. They are afraid they might have little to nothing left. Someone else uh, raises this point I wanted to bring up. This is via Twitter. Jonathan says, Additionally, greater amount of people can see them in the UK rather than going to Ethiopia. And, and that is the uh, idea that some have raised of co cosmopolitanism, that uh, mm. being able to go to Europe to see these uh, artifacts does them more good. Rob here disagrees with that. He says, tell me how many Ethiopians were allowed to travel to the xenophobic UK to view the cultural treasures that were looted from them. Maz, I know you want right. to get in here, but you can see this yeah. debate and where it's headed. What do you make of that? Well, I, I, I mean, this idea of, of uh, maintaining a museum's cosmopolitanism as a reason, as one of the reasons not to not to give back looted items, is I think um, it's it's a fallacy. The I mean, I think that the your the the person who tweeted was absolutely right. Thinking about how difficult it is for Ethiopians to get to Europe sometimes to apply for a visa, to pay for the cost, then to travel, and then to see their own items their own items that was stolen. Um, I, find, I find that idea absolutely repugnant. And the idea that a museum claims um, that it needs some kind of cosmopolitanism maybe lets you know how much those museums need these items and they understand very well there is no, that they, they don't intend to give it back because they intend to keep um, <clears throat> or maintain the, the value of their museum for other people. Mm. But I do think that what Chris, can I, Tristan can I Hunt... Jump in? Yeah, hold on, let me finish. I do think that what Tristan Hunt oh, said about maintaining um, or developing some kind of a collaboration or partnership is the right way. But I think mm. that it should go the other way, that it's up to Ethiopia to decide mm. whom to loan right. those items to and for how long. Oh, I, I hope you will, will, won't mind me getting you to stand down for a moment, because I really want to hear from Ephraim Amare, and he's the director of the National Museum of Ethiopia. What he has to say, really important. Let's have a listen. <laughs> We have a lot of written documents that show they carried out a planned and organized looting in Makdala. We also know that these treasures are in the British Museum. It is clearly known from where these treasures came and to whom they belong. Our main question has never been to have them on loan. Ethiopia's position has always been the restoration of those illegally looted treasures, not to borrow them. 
It doesn't sound like there's much room for negotiation there from the director of the National Museums of Ethiopia. Malika, what do you want to leave us with? Edna says, as an Ethiopian, every time this issue is raised, it pains me. But it's important to keep this conversation alive and bring awareness to this injustice. We will continue our conversation, but online with Maza and Maxwell and Awal. Thank you so much for being part of our program today. We will see you at hashtag AJStream. See you next time. Thanks for watching.